Welcome to a large model showman's engine, part 78. Mounting the piece of stainless steel in the four-jaw independent chuck of my largest lathe, which is an old Smart & Brown 1024. From a home workshop model engineering point of view, this is a large lump of metal to machine. And I show some common problems during the machining process. The problems that you will see in this video really do show how much I am not a machinist. I'm about to fit the large piece of stainless steel into the chuck and anticipating handling this heavy piece of metal. In the last episode I showed me using my Proxon angle grinder to remove the sharp edges. This is always a good idea because you don't want to cut yourself and bleed profusely on the lathe and the workshop floor. In this clip I'm holding the piece of stainless steel in position and tightening the jaws onto it. I intend to face across the front first and then turn the part over so it ends up having a very accurate part of the piece of metal against the chuck jaws. The saw cut is pretty square but it's not going to be as good as if I face across the front first. This is my soft hammer. I'm using the copper face to tap the piece of stainless steel into the chuck jaws and as I do that I'm tightening the chuck jaws so the part ends up being very tightly held in the chuck. And just in case you're interested, this is a Thor number one hammer. And here we are, ready to go. Have a look at the cutting tool. This is the one I normally would use for general purpose work in this lathe. It's a negative rake tool. This means that the cutting insert points slightly downwards. You get a good finish, but it takes a bit more effort to push the tool through the work. I'm going to use some of this stuff. I bought it a while back, but I can't remember where from. I frequently use this as a lubricant for threading, but occasionally when cutting hard metals, particularly ones of this size, it's going to be useful as a general purpose cutting lubricant, although there is a slight drawback with using this. When you start the cutting operation, this lubricant generates quite a lot of smoke around the lathe, right where you stood, and I really don't think it's a good idea to breathe this stuff in. A normal surgical mask would be ineffective, I would think, and I don't have a respirator. My home workshop health and safety method is to set the cook going, open the workshop doors and stand outside. This is okay for a facing cut, but it wouldn't be a good idea if I was taking a longitudinal cut. I'm not actually stood very far from the lathe, and if I look through the door, I can see it. But really, it's not easy to see at the moment because the entire workshop is full of fog. This job is going to take a long time. I was aware of that when I bought the oversized lump of metal. I don't mind though, I would think that some viewers will learn something along the way. Patience is a virtue, but there are limits. This always reminds me of a company that I used to visit when I was a computer engineer. The company made extremely large lathes, mainly for turning locomotive wheels and things like that. I'll just get back to the job for a moment. I've more or less machined one side of the piece of stainless steel, and the job is generating a lot of swarf, and you must not do what you've just seen me do. I'll put this clip on screen again. This metal swarf is extremely sharp, and you must not touch it with your hand. By demonstrating this, I actually cut my finger. One has to suffer for one's art, and the show must go on. After removing the swarf, I turned the part round in the chuck, and here's the part refitted in the chuck with the machine surface touching the inner chuck jaws. And once again, with my Thor number one copper and hide faced hammer using the copper side, I tap the part into position while I tighten the chuck. I have two or three soft hammers, but these are the best type. The plastic and rubber ones bounce, but this doesn't, it just hammers. It's time now to face across the front of the other side, and I'm not using lubricant this time. I also need to mention that this carbide tip is not the sharpest carbide tip in the world. I've been using it for quite a while. What I intend to do during this episode, a bit later on, is break the tip by taking too fierce a cut. Back now to the story about the company that I used to visit when I was a computer engineer. Stood at a very large milling machine was an old man. 
He was a man of very few words, but strangely enough, I got on really well with him and we used to have a bit of a chat. His job was to machine the lathe beds. Now, some of these lathe beds were about 30 feet long and they were on a massive milling machine. I mean, it was like a small town. And day in, day out, for most of his working life, he'd stood by this milling machine as the immensely long lathe bed moved very slowly in front of him and a milling cutter was taking a cut. I said to him, how deep a cut are you taking? And he said, 15 thou. One thou is one thousandth of an inch. And this man would stand there, smoking his pipe, watching the small milling cutter cutting the metal, removing 15 thou over 30 feet at a very slow speed. This job is already driving me mad. And once again, for the millionth time, I'm not an engineer or a machinist, and it really does show in this episode. When I used to visit this lathe manufacturing company in Halifax, and that's Halifax in West Yorkshire, not Nova Scotia, if I arrived in the morning, I would see him at his machine. And he was always nice and clean, smoking his pipe as usual. But if I visited the company in the afternoon, his hands and face were black, because he was machining cast iron, and he was generally covered in cast iron dust, which of course is black. One day I said to him, aren't you ever tempted to take a bigger cut and speed up the traverse? And his reply was a bit odd. He was quite indignant and said, oh no, no, no I can't do that. It would distort the lathe bed that I'm machining. The Keith Appleton School of Impatient Machining means I'm taking far too deep a cut in this instance, just to speed up the job because I'm losing the will to live. And here's a good reason why you should not do what you see me doing here, taking too deep a cut. I'll run the sequence more than once so you can see what happens. The piece of stainless steel locks solid against the tool and stops dead. The chuck rotates for a while. Watch it again closely. I always have the main drive belt to this lathe not particularly over tight. Because in the past I've actually broken tool holders like the one you see here. The tool was locked solid against a piece of stainless steel. I couldn't rotate the chuck in either direction, either by hand or under power, and when I wound back the cutting tool, the very edge of the tip broke off. A simple fix, I just changed the carbide tip for a new one, and already you can see the difference between the old tip and the new one. Look at the finish on the work. When I was making this video, in my head, I could see an image of the man who stood by the milling machine shaking his head and going tut, tut, tut. For the time being, with the new tip, I can actually take slightly deeper cuts, which for me is a good thing. I'm using some lubricant again, and the amount of swath that I'm creating is going to be monumental in this job. In 1996, when I built my seven and a quarter inch gauge Titch locomotive, that I used to run around my garden railway, I turned the smoke box from a solid billet of mild steel and that filled two dustbinfuls of swarf. Most of the swarf that you can see here was generated during this episode. You will notice that I'm removing it from the lathe with a pair of grips. You must not use your fingers for this job. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.